One of the most useful tools for car audio installation is a multimeter. With it, you can check a speaker's resistance, tell if it is good or bad, set amplifier gains, and even use it as a cheap DIY amp dyno. We're also gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive into the Jensen J10 ASB powered subwoofer. We're also gonna do a little bit of a comparison between the amplifier components on the J10 ASB and the TBX10A from Dual. So definitely be sure to stick around for that. What a multimeter does is it actually uses the electricity from its own internal battery to monitor and measure the different characteristics of electricity. For example, if we turn the dial to the omega symbol, which pretty much looks like an upside down horseshoe, you can measure a speaker's resistance or the ohms of the speaker, which is how speakers are rated. Also, if it reads open or jumps around erratically, that's a very good sign that you have a bad speaker. Fun fact, the human body has 1,000 to 100,000 ohms of resistance. I check in at about 1.5K, and it can even go as low as 500 ohms internally. So put your personal measurement down in the comments, but please external only, I really don't care to know about your internal resistance. Another crucial use for a multimeter is checking your vehicle's battery. When the vehicle is not running, it should be anywhere from like 12.3 to 12.7 volts. This one's sitting at 12.5. And when it is running, it should be between 13.5 and 14.5. Now, if you check your voltage on your battery while your vehicle is running and it's under 13.5, that means you probably have a problem with your alternator. You can also figure out if you have a bad power or ground wire or a lot of resistance in them. But before we get into all that, you're going to want to go ahead and download some type of Ohm's Law calculator. This is the one that I use. It's totally necessary if you don't like doing math and it's free with ads. With that, you'll be able to find the target output voltage via the gain setting on your amplifier. Actually, let's get into that. Thank <laughs> you. 
We have the enclosure. Everything seems pretty well built. They seem to use a lot of glue, which I'd rather them use too much glue than not enough. The driver seems to be pretty substantial. Honestly, it's got a big chunky magnet. Kind of a standard plain Jane spider, but it seems to be pretty stout. Uh, just kind of stamped steel basket. Uh, not exactly sure. It's a rubber surround. Um, the only thing that I could s recommend to Jensen is make this blue a little bit lighter or outline the Jensen in white just so it pops a little bit more because I like that color but just a little bit lighter. It's hard to see it. It doesn't really contrast too well. But here was kind of what I was interested in seeing and I'll show a quick little screenshot of the amplifier from the Dual TBX 10A. The only thing really that is different that I can see is this is a transformer and the transformer on the Dual TBX 10A was a round toroidal, I believe that's what it's called, transformer, which uh, they're kind of sought after in the hi-fi markets and uh, by audiophile snobs and stuff like that. So I think they might be a little bit of a cleaner power, but I don't think they make quite as much power. Maybe this will be up in the power a little bit. I don't know. But um, the only other thing that I could see is these power resistors on the output section. And uh, the ones on the dual TBX-10A were the little pill style, you know, like regular resistors, but the ceramic ones. And this one has the standy uppy types. Pretty much everything other than that looks pretty much the same. I believe these are the rail caps. Those are the same. Uh, the supply cap looked to be about the same. Those could be flipped too. I'm not really sure. So yeah, I'm definitely liking the Jensen J10 ASB for sure. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to solder an extra pair of wires that are going to actually come out of the box. I'm going to put the speaker in it, you know, put the amplifier back on it, and they're going to come out a little bit. I'm not really going to tighten the speaker too much as to not crimp the wires. And this is going to be a one-time deal, and I will take it back out. But with that, I will be able to capture the voltage that the amplifier is actually making. Okay, so you'll notice that I put a Uno card under there. That's to catch any solder uh, in case if it falls down onto the speaker cone. And uh, I'm just going to be cutting these off afterwards. But um, yeah, this should work out pretty good just for the test. I'm just going to cut these really short so you know they're not going to interfere and be like it never even happened. So basically, before I tighten this down, we'll just stick out something like this. That is our test lead. Haha. <laughs> So like I said, I'm going to tighten, probably not those two all the way, and then maybe tighten the other ones about three quarters of the way, well, 90% of the way. And I think that will do. Let's go ahead and hook it all the way back up, and I'm kind of interested in seeing what this thing will do. Okay, so there it is all back together. This thing sits literally right at three ohms. All right, so 24.8 volts at 3.2 ohms, we actually come up with 192 watts of power. Now, that was not with the gain setting all the way up, but it was with it probably about three quarters of the way up, so we could still go down a little bit. But what I can do now is take my same voltage and actually find my target voltage for what it should be and then slowly lower my gain until I reach that. So Big D from Molson Audio, check him out up here, actually did a video on the Dual TBX-10A and did a proper amp dyno on it. And if I remember correctly, it did somewhere around the rated power for continuous power, not max power. But maybe if we ask Derek very nicely, he will uh, actually get a Jensen J10 ASB and do a proper dyno on it. Do check out that video, tell him blown capacitor sent you. So one last thing before we leave and something that I didn't really go into that I said I was going to is your power and grounds for your vehicle as well as your power and grounds for your stereo system. Now, the voltage that you get when you take the voltage measurement at your battery should be the exact same voltage when you take it at your amplifier leads where your amplifier is. If the voltage has dropped a little bit, that means a couple of different things. It means you could have a bad ground or it means that you could have resistance in the wire via corrosion. 
I was actually kind of thinking about doing a separate video on that entirely. Uh, let me know in the comments if that would be something that you'd be interested in. But for now, I think that's about all I got. Thank you guys so much. YouTube and you guys as well are pretty much my life. I appreciate you so much. And um, if you have any questions, comments, anything like that, put them down in the comments. I'll get to them as soon as I can. And if this helped you in any way, maybe give a like, subscribe, hit the notification. But anyways, guys, hope that helped you out. Hope it was entertaining. And we hope to see you on the next one. Have a good one. Thank you.